Guys, today we are taking out big trees with a small bucket. Okay, maybe not this big, but they're still pretty impressive. You don't want to miss it. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to take you inside the belly of the beast, do a little testing on a new prototype. So we've had our mini stump bucket over here on the 1025 in production since last January. All right, we've had a lot of great feedback. You know, we make these for the Skid Steer Quick Attach and the John Deere Quick Attach. So they're a great bucket. They're sized appropriately for the smaller tractors, the subcompacts and the small compact tractors out there. Now we've had every intention of following that up with an HD version for the larger compact tractors. And you're gonna see one. We're gonna see if we can break it with our Skid Steer. And then we've got one on the 4720 as well. We're gonna do a little bit of playing around, a little bit of field test, see if we can break them, see how they work. And if you'd be so kind, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. If you wanna see more tractors, and property maintenance videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you want something for your tractor or your skid steer, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. We ship attachments all over the country. So if you're familiar with the mini stump bucket that we had, this is gonna be the same thing, just bigger, okay? So it's thicker steel all around. It's gonna be longer front to back, still the same width approximately. The point being, you wanna have a concentrated area. So you don't want this to be a wide edge, otherwise you're back to a regular bucket. So you kinda of want that point or that shovel type area there to be able to dig a hole or dig out a stump or dig a trench, whatever it is that's requiring a lot of force in a small area. The idea of a stump bucket isn't new. They've been around for a while, but there was just something about a lot of the buckets out there that this or that or the other thing that I just didn't like. So I want to take all those features that I liked from everything else I saw on the market and put it all into one bucket. You're going to see some that are really long front to back. And if you know anything about leverage, which I don't know a whole lot, but I do know that like a breaker bar, right? If you're way out on a handle over here and you're trying to pop a nut off over on this end, the further out you are, the more leverage you have. So the same concept with a bucket. If it's way out in front, I just envision tweaking of the loader arms going on. So I don't like those buckets that are so long. I want something still fairly close to the tractor. So while you might not dig down as deep, you're still gonna get a lot of different projects done and it's not gonna have nearly the same risk of damaging your tractor. So again, this bucket isn't yet in production, but we're gonna put a listing up on the website. We'll have a little button that you can click to be notified. So if you wanna sign up for a notification on when this is available, just go to the website, click that, get your name on the list, and then as soon as we have them available to have pre-orders start rolling in, you'll be one of the first to know. Okay, so we're gonna do a little field testing, but bear in mind, this bucket here is designed for like the three and the four series John Deere's, kind of as a, a good visualization. So like a 3039R, you know, a 4720 is about as big, about 66 horsepower, so it's about the max. And I hesitate to say that because horsepower is just one variable, right? You can have a 45 horsepower five series tractor, you can have a 66 horsepower four series tractor, a 46 horsepower three series tractor, you know? And it's a little bit all over the map, so a little bit of it's common sense right there's tractor weight there's a tractor hydraulic system there's a lot of other things and variables that are coming into play you know behind you know the weight that's behind uh, the bucket itself the hydraulic system that's potentially pushing or tweaking that bucket is a huge component that goes into the design and that's part of the reason why I, I slapped it on the 100 horsepower 333g I have no intent of of selling it on or making this for a, a large skid steer like this but I just want to see how long it's going to take I have I have every expectation that this is going to get destroyed by the 333. If it doesn't, I'll be I'll be amazed, but I plan on breaking this. I just want to see how much I can do with it before I ruin it. Now, I'm a visual learner, so we're going to go ahead and get a little demonstration going on, seeing how these stump buckets perform in action. I'm a little curious. This is going to be my first time using a stump bucket with a self-leveling loader. I kind of think that's going to make it harder to use, but I guess we'll find out here pretty quick. I am really tempted to hop right in the skid steer and get to working with that first, but we're gonna use the 4720 and see how it goes.
So we took out a handful of trees with the 4720 in the bucket. Uh, observations, we bent the bottom rail of it a little bit, uh, visually noticeable. I don't know how to quantify that, but not a whole lot, but you can see where it is bent. However, it seemed to just kind of stop at that point. That was sometime early on in the first tree. Uh, and then tackled one, two, three, four, five more after that. We're gonna go ahead and try out the skid steer bucket. It worked really well. Um, I don't think the self-leveling loader was nearly as big of a deal as I thought it might have been. You know, it's the same concept with a, a self-leveling loader or a non-self-leveling. You, you kind of dig along each side, try to break up the roots, uh, break up in front of it. Obviously, I can't really get to the backside of these trees, so everything is being tackled from about, you know, 180 degrees, and, and the rest of it's just gonna be, you're just dealing with it. So you kind of loosen all that up, and then I like to kind of push against the tree a little bit. You might have seen me get a little a little crazy there. Uh, it slipped off, the bucket did, and, and slid forward, and and kind of slammed on the uh, the side plate there of the bucket but um, you want to watch that this is not a game of speed so to speak it's it's take your time you're in low gear you're in four-wheel drive i've got loaded tires i think about 1200 pounds in the tires and then another 600 pounds of wheel weights on here as well so uh, creeping up on 2000 pounds you add on the speco quick hitch too for rear counterweight and that really helps. You know, you want to keep those rear tires. You can see how they're 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 sinking in and trenching, and it's pretty pretty wet and muddy out here too right now. But you want to have a lot of traction, get all that power right to the the pushing point that you want. But these are nine, 10, 11 inch diameter trees that we're pushing out. A few different varieties, and it's taken I don't know a few minutes of time for each tree, so not a lot of time at all. I'll probably come back after I knock a lot of these down and, and just throw a grapple on and make a big burn pile or something somewhere. But um, it makes quick work of it. Man, I'll tell you, I mean, this is, it's not the same as a backhoe, but I don't think this is taking any longer than a backhoe to do. And we're tackling pretty good sized trees here, knocking them out for a heck of a lot less money. So this here should give you a little bit better look. This is a backside of the stump bucket. And, and this is the same concept that we have in the mini bucket, but you know, for these bigger tractors, that's what we're talking about. A lot more power, hydraulic force, just weight behind it. So you can flick more damage. And so the same type of cross bracing that we have down here really isn't uh, up to par. So I think we might have to switch to some tubing perhaps, uh, maybe on the top and the bottom. Uh, just something else to provide some additional support back there. So we have the heavier steel, but that by itself is not going to cut it. Alrighty, well now let's try the skid steer. Alright, so I'm curious before we get started where you guys think this is going to fail, because it's going to fail. <laughs> At least I'm going to do my darndest to try to make it fail. And the difference between the 4720 and this skid steer is that there's a full plate, almost like a full backing right here behind that black steel. So it's gonna have a lot more support back there naturally. So the other bucket kind of bent in at the bottom. So imagine that bottom plate just pushing back. That's where it bent in a little bit. I don't know if that's gonna happen on this one. It could drive the failure point to a different location, but there's only one way to find out. So if you think you have an idea, why don't you hit pause and leave a comment down below. Now this is just for fun. Again, this machine weighs over 12,000 pounds. It's a 100 horsepower unit. This loader will lift something like six, 7,000 plus pounds. So it is a beast of a machine. We did not design it for this. I'm just out here doing my due diligence, doing some prototype testing. I want to see how long it can last on a machine this size or what kind of damage is inflicted, just to know where the limits are.
Well, that was a piece of cake. It was like just snapping toothpicks with this stump bucket. The 333, this skid steer is just a monster, man. I mean, that first tree that came out was literally just one shovel down and it picked it right out. And so it actually failed where it's intended to fail, which is on the replaceable teeth. And again, we didn't design this bucket to be used on a machine this big, and so those teeth failed pretty quickly. Uh, that cutting edge there, that's a bolt on edge. It's replaceable, it's made out of AR400 steel, but it's meant to give and try to protect everything else on the stump bucket. So if you have a lot of force, a lot of exertion going on, that's where it's gonna bend and kind of take the brunt of the force. You just slap on a new edge and get back to work. Now, I'm not just out here haphazardly digging out trees. There's a pond down there, a pretty, well, a small lake. It's 55 acres, so big, big pond, small lake. I'm not sure where the cutoff is, but uh, we're trying to clear out. It's gonna take a while, a lot of the undergrowth, a lot of the smaller stuff to open up and get a good view of the pond down there. It's gonna be a big project. You know, this is where, where the house is supposed to go in the future. And so this kind of this whole corner here is what we wanna open up and get a better view down there. It's about, I think a 70 or 80 foot drop down this slope as well. Um, we're gonna see what the right tool is. I got a lot of different tools in my bag, so we're gonna test a lot of them out, see what we can get done safely, efficiently. You know, this hillside is, is uneasy for a lot of tractors. The skid steer handles it really well, but time will tell. And I figured, what the heck, since we have it hooked up, let's show you the mini stump bucket on the 1025R, dig out a few trees, get you a little taste of that one too.
right, well, a little taste there, the 1025, representative of a subcompact, all right? You know, a smaller tractor. That's what this mini bucket is designed for. You can see the same replaceable edge that's on here. We've used this bucket a lot, and this is the original edge that came with it. Uh, if you are gonna buy one, I would recommend getting an extra edge with it though. That way, in case something does happen, you got another one ready to slap on and get back to work. But we tackled a couple different trees. The first one took, I don't know, well under 10 minutes. The second one, that one was a bit of a bugger. You know, again, when you're working only on half of the side of the tree, you can't get to the roots to the other side. It makes it a little bit more challenging. You know, we have a bit of a slope here too. So it was kind of an awkward spot and there was just a really good root that was just a little bit out of reach that required some extra effort. And this one probably took 25 minutes to get out. However, I don't know if you see this or not, but there's, there's no sweat <laughs> at all. So it sure beats a shovel or an ax or anything else out there. I'm just sitting on the tractor the whole time, moving around, going back and forth. It's a lot of fun. You get to take some frustration out. You get to dig a whole stump in a tree out. It's a good time. Well, that's, I guess that's still a pretty good diameter there at the base, huh? Probably eight inches, huh? Eight, nine inches there, depending on where you want to measure it. Well, that's going to wrap it up today. I do want to point out this rhino hide canopy. Now you can see the forward leaning rops we're testing out some, some different brackets here. Um, that goofy ROPS has really posed a problem for a few different products. And so Don over there at Rhino Hide is working on a new design to keep this nice and level. So this is the Rhino Hide Canopy, one of the GWT Discount Club uh, vendors that we work with. So you order it from their website. Right after your purchase, you're gonna get a survey. You tell them you heard about it from Good Works Tractors or just tell them GWT. They're gonna refund 5% off of your order. With every other vendor in the GWT Discount Club, which you can see right on our website, you can follow the links from our website right to those vendors' websites. Whether you want a grab handle or some steps or tie downs or bucket brackets or a grill guard, all sorts of stuff for your tractors. You enter code GWT on those folks' website, you're gonna get a discount, I'll get a commission, they ship it right to you, we all win. But for everything else, you go right to goodworkstractors.com, products that we sell as well. You're gonna check out right on the website, you can make payment there, enter your billing and shipping address, we'll pack it up and ship it right to your door. As always, if you found this video enjoyable, go ahead, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe to see more tractor and property development videos. And if you want something for your machine, check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.